welcome to Orinda Talks Fantasy and Sci-Fi. I'm your host Orinda and today we are talking about Dune with Jonathan Ford. Dune is a 1965 science fiction novel by the American author Frank Herbert. Dune is set in the distant future amidst a feudal interstellar society in which various noble houses control planetary fives. It tells the story of a young Paul Atreides whose family accepts the stewardship of the planet Arrakis. While the planet is an inhospitable and sparsely populated desert wasteland, it is the only source of melange or the spice, a drug that exists life and attains mental abilities. Melange is also necessary for space navigation, which requires a kind of multidimensional awareness and foreign insight that only the drugs provide. As the melange can only be produced on Arrakis, control of the planet is thus a coveted and dangerous undertaking. The story explores the multi tired inter- Actions of politics, religion, ecology, technology, and human emotion, as the factions of the empire confront each other in a struggle for the control of Arrakis and its spies. Of course, Dune also has been filmed in 1984 and 2021. Today is our guest, Jonathan Ford. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Arinda. Nice to be with you again. So today we're going to talk about Dune. Can you tell me in your own words, what is Dune? Um, okay, well, it, it all started off with a novel called Dune in a, uh, written in about 1965, I believe which is when I was born, um, so quite a while ago now, <laughs> and written by by Frank Herbert. The premise of that book is uh, that um, a civilization dependent on um, one substance um, called spice, and... Um, and the things that uh, people will do and the ways in which it is used, the spice. And um, yes, basically it it causes great conflicts uh, because um, and people will do um, whatever they can to get it, negotiations and smuggling and whatever. So yes, yes. That's the, the premise of the, the first book, but it also hints at other things which will come in subsequent books. And it's also been turned into a film by... Um, yeah, I heard they, that was a, uh, yeah. a real fuss about it because it's got some a few producers and then it's uh, they wanted to make it in two f- movies but then they had to do it in one and there was a lot of trouble with it all uh, right well i don't don't know much about that um the latest i've i've heard actually was that the the new movie which is coming out in the uk in um to um Next month, uh, the well, this month now actually, at the end of October, um, in the UK, though it's already out in Germany, I know, and uh, so probably other other European countries as well. Um, the latest I've heard that it was going to be a two part. I haven't heard anything to suggest that it's not but it might well be true. And, um, uh, yeah, um, there was a previous film movie in 1984, I think, um, 
David Lynch uh, movie, which was, I, I thought, quite good. Um, but um, because I think uh, it's such a big book and such a covers a lot of ground that it's um, probably um, takes a lot of time to actually film a whole movie or even two about it, as as you suggest, yes. So I believe that the uh, spice is some kind of a drug, right? And uh, the planet, uh, I believe the name is Arrakis, is the... Uh, that planet is also called Dune. Am I correct? Yes, yes, that's right. You've uh, you've done well so far. Yeah, <laughs> in in deed, uh, yeah, and um, it also goes. Uh, if you go into uh, the book hints at um, past events and. It seems so. Uh, I mean, there's the spices of the uh, at the core of things, but um, the book also hints at uh, a past uh, war there was, in fact, uh, between the technology war, basically, and so that if you have if you have a look at the uh, the film. By David Lynch, and I might in the the film also um, that's coming out s soon. The technology looks a little old, of the um, equipment being used, and that's because um, that there was a war against thinking machines, as it's as it's termed, and so uh, we learn about that. In the um, it's hinted to in the June book, the original, but also uh, expands into um, prequels and sequels of the book, um, which I have probably about all of. There's about 20 books in total at, at the moment, and uh, so yes, uh, it's a good. TVs in that way keeps you interested. So can you tell me something more about this new technology? Um, well, yes. I mean, basically, um, it was a bit of a war against the computers or thinking m machines, as it was uh, termed. Um, basically, uh, it's alluding to the use of computers um, which was in the past um, if you have a look on YouTube there's actually a video which explains this a bit better um, than maybe I can the um, the war was about the fact that um, a few people own the technology and um, use it to enslave other people and um, so it was thought that there was too much reliance on this and they became as I say the machines actually became thinking machines which is in fact uh, not far from where I think um, computers computers are heading at the moment and um, yeah, so basically it was thought these were machines were were taking over a little bit and so there was uh, a plan to wipe them all out and rely on man's own mind and back to the um, innocent technologies of mankind. I also saw something about um, those big sandworms of Arrakis. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Because I think they also are connected with the spice, right? E yes. Um, 
Right, yes. Well, it's um, thought that, uh, yes, I mean, we get a, there's a suggestion uh, that uh, the spice is the worm. The worm is the spice. They, they certainly um, attack um, the mining operations of the spice. The spice is, is mined by what they call harvesters and uh, the harvesters will go on to um, buy field as it were and uh, the worms would then come would uh, soon come to this harvester and try to attack it um, for mining the spice because basically um, the harvester would uh, create a rhythmic noise and um, the sandworms would be attracted to that noise and therefore come and um, try to destroy the operations there. It would also come to any rhythmic vibrations, which is why um, anybody who walk in the desert uh, of uh, Arrakis is um, is advised to walk without rhythm, making um, random movements rather than anything more regimented. And also, um, if you want to attract a worm for any reason, you would put what they called a thumper in the ground, which would um, do a rhythmic something to attract a worm. You might want to to ride a worm to get over the desert, and that's how you would uh, attract it. So I guess he could say not only do they defend the spice fields, they are defending themselves, they're protecting their existence. Another name for the worms is Shai Hulud, which um, is a is a is a blessing. Said when the first um, uh, attack occurs, and uh, it's therefore apparent to Paul that the spice and the worms may be connected. So uh, that's another interesting point. Also, there have been attempts to bring a worm from Arrakis to another planet to start a cycle of spice there, but it is never a success. So there's something as well that links the spice to Arrakis. So can you tell me something about the head characters? Sorry, Bob. The what? The characters that oh, is playing a big part sorry, of sorry. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't. Um, well, I suppose that um, the main character in all in all of this is uh, Paul Atreides, and he's the son of um, Duke Leto Atreides. Um, the actual. Um, the book I'm reading at the moment is is another prequel to June, and it's called the uh, the Duke of Caladan, and um, that's focusing on Duke Leto, uh, who is Paul's father, and then we have the um, the Lady Jessica who's um, Duke Leto's wife, well, actually not wife, um, concubine, never married because of uh, political um, reasons. And um, also, um, interesting enough, um, she's a member of what the, what they call the, the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, who... Which is another, which is another strand to the story, have um, 
their uh, plan to control and manipulate bloodlines um, to uh, create a super being um, which um, would be a person who could um, see where they as women could not apparently they could not see into this place this distant future so they were looking for a male to fill this role and they were looking for it um, to be someone of their choosing their manipulation but um, so apparently if you're a member of the Benny Jesuit you can choose what kind of sex of baby you have Jessica who's remembering um, remember was the concubine of Duke Leto was instructed to have only girls but she disobeyed and had a boy and this boy was the maybe the super being the Quizat's Hadarak and um, the Reverend Gaius Helen and Mohim who came to visit Jessica on Caladan to test him with with something called the box um, chastised Jessica for daring to believe that she could bear this uh, male Quizas Hadarak, uh, but um, after being tested with a box, which uh, is an illusion of pain, when you put your hand in this box, and the idea is to to resist that pain, resist your temptation to take your hand out of the box um, otherwise you would be injured or killed by this gong jaba which uh, um, the Reverend Mother was holding at his neck so um, so they then wonder if he will be this Kwisas Haderach but then but then they wonder will he be ours to control so will they be able to control the direction in which he goes so it's all very interesting um, and of course there are other different characters which help Paul to develop mentally and also his fighting skills and um, we are, so you have Gurney Halak, the weapons master, Duncan Idaho, um, again concerned with his development, but more more of a friend. And uh, Doctor Yui, who is actually um, supposed to be um, a Souk Doctor, Imperial conditioning which was meaning that he was supposed to serve the Atreides household but in fact he was um, manipulated by the Harkonnens which are the rival house the main rival house in the series to uh, to House Atreides and uh, he eventually betrayed House Atreides can you tell me something about the people in the story and the aliens and what else more? Um, yes, well, um, I, I don't know. Yes, the people in the story, well, you have a lot of houses. Again, this houses. Uh, the, the house Carino is the ruling house of the galaxy and the the emperor hails from house Carino. They're all all of 
the houses are interested in money. That's really the thing, money and power and gaining the um, supremacy, gaining the the upper hand. There's uh, spice stockpiles hidden away and things like that. As far as um, alien goes, and I would say there aren't that many who I would term alien. There's uh, the face dancers who can change their appearance at will. Uh, um, they um, so they um, they can be deceitful and uh, yes you, you you have to watch out for the, for the face dancers the yeah so the uh, there and uh, of course you've got uh, various bit bit parts of uh, people but i mean this this is a story really apart from the old one two aliens and the of course the advancement into the technology when you could say that the robots are aliens but interesting enough when in one of the books and again i can't really remember one of these books um uh you become when you die your brain is placed into to one of these machines and you become um, a machine creature yourself. And of course, the the, um, the way of travel through space in this time is by use of the Guild Highliner. Now the Guild is another branch of um, human development, which has uh, arrived since they they decided to scrap the technology and the guild um, emphasizes almost pure mathematics and um, the guild highlighters enable you to travel from one part of the galaxy to the other you know, without moving as long as you're in this guild highlighter which is piloted if you like, by people, or they were people originally, and they're called guild navigators. Now, in one of the books, there were two people who went, two brothers who went for this guild navigator training, who were once human, but once they inhaled the spice gas or melange one of them was able to uh, to carry on one of them was able to take it which means they get higher knowledge and special coordinate knowledge and they're able to pilot this guild highliner see their way through space and but the other one didn't so had to leave but so had to leave the program but in order for them to be able to, to pilot this um, guild highliner they do become disfigured and and barely barely recognizable from the human form so you could term them aliens as well i suppose but that's how people get around in space in 10,191, as um, the movie is said. Do the people have some kind of a superpower? Because I also saw in one of the clips that they had very blue with eyes that is not natural. Uh, right. Well, yes. Now, this is uh, to do with the saturation of, by the blood uh, of the spice. Melange, the spice is in everything. It's in food, 
and, uh, drink and everything like that. So if you do um, take a lot of it, your eyes then become blue. There is, there are people who are addicted to this, and it becomes like a drug to them. So they then, uh, so that's another way of perhaps then getting more uh, blue eyes. Generally, though, people who eat spice have this blue eyes, which doesn't particularly give them any powers, but um, is the effect of this. There's also um, a drug music combination called Simuta, which um, is a combination as a the drug and um, a musical style, which is also addicted, um, which is also an addictive thing. Uh, but again, I would say that generally, the spice, if you eat it daily, is going to come, is going to turn your eyes blue, which is basically when you see. Uh, person of uh, Arrakis or of the dunes, particularly you will notice the blue within blue eyes. And um, so many off-worlders won't have that, but um, some might. And um, it might cause people to wonder where they got their spice from, <laughs> which may be uh, the smuggling operations or whatever. When I did uh, some research for this episode, um, I saw a lot of uh, people who were saying uh, this is one of the best science fiction written novel that there is uh, in all time. What is your opinion about that? Um, I would say so as well. It's it's one. Um, there's a, there's a couple of prizes that it's won. The original novel won the Hugo and Nebula Prize, some science fiction prize, I believe. And yes, I, I think it is not only because the concept was very good in the first writing of it, um, draws on so many ideas you could you could see, for instance, what I got from it when I first read it was I saw the spice as equivalent of maybe um, fuel and oil and things and being dependent on that, um, a society who was dependent on that kind of thing. And uh, I also saw Paul Atreides as a as a illusion if you if you are of a religious inclination you would see him as a as a messiah. In fact, he is described in the book. This is what the people of June were waiting for. The Kwisatz Haderach was to be some kind of a messiah, but also within the book, within the first reading of the book, you discover that there of these something went on before, and of these something is coming after. So the book not only introduces you to the world of June and there's a good in yourself, it also introduces you to um, other concepts which might arise. And some of those concepts, particularly in, if you imagine in the previous books and the, what has gone before, um, have been turned into novels, as has the one that I'm reading now by um, the Duke of Caledon, um by Kevin J. Anderson and 
and also uh, Frank Herbert, Frank Herbert's son, and have the he had access to the manuscripts, which his father put down, and um, has continued to write these great books. But certainly, June is is a great book in itself, and I would say that it deservedly won those prizes, which it has. Yes. Do you have any favorite book? Um, favorite books in the series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, well, June is probably my favorite one. There's also one called something like, I think it is actually called The Sisterhood of June, in which there's a tangent of a, because of the lack of interest or revolution against the the thinking machines, the use of computers or any kind of um, thing like that has been banned. And yet we find that the way that the sisterhood maintain their the records has now been switched to a computer in that book. So that's that's an interesting revelation. And then, of course, there's the book that uh, introduces us particularly to the, to the, to the concept of uh, the thinking machines in the but in Jihad, and that was where we first um, see about this concept and in the way that um, a woman called Serena Butler had a child and um, the computer will try to take it over and there was all kinds of involvement there. Um, so yes, those I, I think uh, different books introduce different concepts, but I think overall, possibly June was the favorite, the original. Do you have any favorite characters or a character in the books that you um, like and maybe can identify yourself with? Um, yes, well, I mean, I, I think that I'm quite like Paul, really, quite like Paul Atreides. I see myself as Paul. I've, I've discussed this with someone in the past, actually. Um, I was, uh, I would identify myself with Paul. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I think that the character development and the relationship we had he had with his father was a bit like the one I had with mine and I think that he um, I think of him actually as I'm reading the Duke of Caladan now I'm thinking of him my father as the Duke yeah, and, and I think that those two are the, the male roles that I identify with. They um, actually, um, the, the I should perhaps, I don't know if you are aware of the stage, but make your way there. The, the characters were maybe further developed from the original movie um, in the short kind of mini series that was um, done by the, the sci-fi channel they did a series uh, of June and they also did uh, a series of Children of June which is the, um, the sequel that Frank Herbert written uh, and yeah but uh, again, yes, it's it's probably true to say that Paul and his father, um, Duke Leto, are the main 
people that I identify with. What are your expectations of the new Dune movie that is coming out at the end of this month? Um, well, I, I've, I've heard from someone who's seen it in June that it is very good. Um, I think it will be, I don't know how long it is particularly, but I think it will be, even if it isn't a great length, it will go into more detail and they will try to be more accurate to the book. The, the film in 1984 with, uh, David Lynch skipped over a few things because of, of the, but, but it still was a good film in my opinion. But from what I've heard, um, the new one is going to be very good. And, um, yes, I'm, I'm, I've heard a lot of hype about it. It's been rumored for release for quite a while, but I think it's been uh, put off because of the, the pandemic or the, shots that I've seen in, say, magazines have been quite good there. So, yes, I'm I'm hopeful that it's going to be very, very good. And I've, I'm, I'm actually hoping to see it with, with a friend of mine who I, in fact, introduced to the, to the book and the original film. And we hope to compare notes afterwards, but we're both quite uh, excited about it and uh, yes so I think it's something to look forward to well thank you Jonathan for joining me it was nice talking to you thank you yes it was nice talking to you as well so yes it's um and maybe to another time yes well I hope so yes yes I hope so okay Look forward to hearing this and look forward to to, hear, to hearing from you again. Dear listeners, thank you for listening to this podcast. I try to be the first as much as I can and I hope you guys like it. So tell me what you think how I'm doing with this podcast. If you have any tips for me how I can do things better, let me know. Bear in mind, I made this podcast for fun and I don't have to make money out of it. If you like to talk about this episode or want to comment on this episode, you can reach out on Podbean, the Facebook group, the YouTube channel, and the Discord server of Arena Talks Fantasy and Sci-Fi. And I also have a Twitter account especially for this podcast at OTFASP. Or in the Tax Fantasy and Sci Fi is also listen, follow, and subscribe on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts, fa- the Facebook group, and the YouTube channel. I'm your host, Orinda. Thank you for listening, and I will see you next time. The next episode we will talk about is Dune Part 2.